my good friend and colleague uh, Richard Cumming on the mid floor. So I'm actually determined this time to uh, <laughs> so get, get, a, get, get a live demonstration of editorial independence. Um, <laughs> so this time I'm determined to be on the right side of the time limit, so uh, my friend Richard. Um, I really just focus on um, sort of the main, uh, the main theme, a couple of main themes, and really what um, Arthur referred to as the, the million dollar question of the business model. Uh, I'm not going to spend time on whether people uh, will pay for journalism online. I think there's been uh, far too much talking on it and not enough doing. Uh, from an FT perspective, we've shown that readers are willing to pay um, and that we're getting uh, growth in subscription revenues of about 40% year on year. So the issue is what kind of model works best. I think even more interesting is how we can go beyond the paywall to transform the business. Don't get me wrong, digital content revenues uh, are important but they're only part of the power of uh, the paid-for model. In particular, the information and intelligence you can gain uh, from readers through a subscription model uh, is a powerful asset, which uh, was unthinkable in the days of anonymous newsstand sales and even volume-driven uh, web strategies. On the first point, what kind of model works best? There's no single answer, but all of the correct answers must align the model with how readers consume uh, journalism on the internet, which is very different from their engagement with newspapers. The so-called frequency model that we've been using is an attempt to create uh, the necessary flexibility. But we do realize that while some readers um, want an immediate full uh, and subscription relationship, others are coming for specific articles, whether driven by blogs or by, uh, by our friends uh, from Google. Um, we accept that some of them may get sticker shock at taking out an annual subscription of several hundred pounds for a single story. It's like buying a newspaper for one article uh, for a few hundred pounds, uh, which seems fair to me, uh, but then obviously I'm biased. So the next step is to extend the flexibility of the frequency model via micropayments. And we'll be trialing a service with PayPal uh, over the coming months um, that will enable readers to pay for a single story or for a day pass uh, or for a week's pass. But pricing and content revenues are only part um, of the point of uh, paid for models. I'm reminded here of that, um, that scene from The Graduate uh, where Mr. Robinson takes uh, Dustin Hoffman uh, aside uh, and makes a, a solemn prediction for future success, uttering uh, the single word uh, plastics. For traditional media, I think data is perhaps the new plastic. Uh, it may not sound sexy, and it may not be why many of us chose a uh, career uh, in the media, but intelligence regarding readership patterns um, and readership cohorts is the bridge between the age of anonymity uh, and the age of engagement, and it's a natural result of a subscription model or a registration model. Obviously, the value of data is hardly breaking news to Google, but for traditional publishers, data uh, is a valuable byproduct of subscription and registration models that helps offset challenges of the digital transition. The benefits apply across the business from marketing, product development, and advertising. You know, we've been um, analyzing the reading patterns of new subscribers and targeting those readers exhibiting similar patterns before they subscribe. And the marketing team call it uh, triggered upsell. And I call it uh, voodoo. Um, <laughs> but it works. It's by far our cheapest form of acquisition, a hundredth or less of the cost uh, of direct mail. In editorial, a number of new media ventures are premised on the science of relevance and the use of their own or net traffic to shape uh, and lead coverage. We would never edit by numbers, so to speak, but we can all learn a lot from, from usage patterns. And in advertising, of course, data underpins segmentation and the efficiency of marketing spend. There's another misperception here, I think, the notion of a necessary choice between paid for and advertising models. I don't buy that. Um, especially in a world of plunging commodity CPMs, it's simply unrealistic to expect traditional publishers to secure the kind of volumes of traffic required to fund their substantial news organizations. Um, all of this finally has big implications for the current burst of activity uh, around e-readers. We think this is all potentially exciting. Distribution economies could be very significant, especially for a global, uh, a global newspaper. And new devices that draw readers to content are obviously a good thing. But there are important conditions and principles that need to be observed. In particular, uh, we think it's essential 
uh, to retain a direct relationship with the reader, to own the customer, uh, and to retain pricing power. I'm sensing that Richard is reaching for the bomb, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave it there and can pick up on any of those themes.